Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to show you three different ways in which we can add pictures to tables. The first of which is through a comment pop-up like this. The other is directly in the table on a, in a cell like this. And also when you select it, we're going to display a picture on selection. So stay with us, it's going to be an excellent training. <laughs> Alrighty, thanks. Let's go ahead and get started. And today, as I had said, we're going to be going through three different ways to add pictures to a table. And the reason we do this is because oftentimes we want to associate specific pictures with items in a list or in a table. And we can do that sometimes. Those items are going to be products that we're selling, or they're going to be employee pictures, or they're going to be locations with maybe properties, or there are a number of reasons that we can do this. And let's go ahead and go over those three. Um, once again, they are um, entering uh, a picture within a pop-up comment, just like we have done here. They are directly in a cell, as we've done here, and then also through a pop-up picture, as we've done here on the right side. So let's get started. We can do this through the VBA model. We go into the Developers tab and clicking Visual Basic. If you don't have the Developers tab, you can click on the Options in the File menu. Go ahead and click Customize Ribbon, and then make sure your Developers tab is selected. Likewise, you can use the shortcut key Alt F11. So we'll go ahead and do that now and launch our VB editor. And in this editor, we have uh, just uh, one module, and our module contains multiple macros. And we have uh, just a few little macros and work on the sheet itself, on sheet one. So let's let's go over on sheet one and show you what we're doing here. Um, we're using the selection change only, okay? And remember, selection change happens only when we select a cell. So that means when we select a cell, we want something to happen. And in this case, we want two things to happen. One, I want that row highlighted. And we've gone over that in previous uh, details including multiple selected and single selected rows. So we're not going to go over that in this. And in the other case, we are going to basically show a picture. So those are the two things that are going to happen in this macro. Okay, so what we've done here is in this macro, we've done two things. Uh, first, in A4, A4, we've entered the target row, and that is what we use for our. Um, for our highlighted cell. We've conditional formatted this table so that when this becomes seven, that row is highlighted, okay? We have gone over that feature in other videos, so we're not gonna focus on that right now. The next of which is we are going to run a macro, okay? So what we're saying is when we select E5 through L16, we want something to happen. We want to one, we wanna put whatever row we've selected in A4, and number two, we want to display the picture. And we've, that's done through a macro called pick, display, on, click. Okay? Else, else, and what this means is, else we want to do two things. That means if we have not selected, if we select something outside this range, outside this range, okay? Outside this range would be here, would be here, 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 perhaps here outside this range, we want some things to happen. Now, what do I want to happen? I want this picture to go away, okay? I want two things to happen. I want this picture to go away, and I want this um, row highlighted to not be highlighted. So that is how we handle when we unselect outside the range there, all right? And as well, what we do is we also want to clear the contents of of cell A4, which uh, also clears the highlighting of the row. And then we're going to delete the picture, right? What we want to do is we want to delete the picture that's shown. That means when we highlight it, right, we show a picture here. And then when we unclick it, we want that picture gone, right? When we click outside that range, we want that picture gone. And the reason is, the reason we've surrounded that row with on air resume next and on air go to zero is because if this picture does not exist and we try to delete a picture, 
that does not exist, it's going to cause a bug. But if we surround that, if we wrap that row in these two lines, we're going to be able to skip any bugs that might occur. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like, just so you can see. We'll comment out those two lines, and then we're going to click outside, and we'll see this bug. Basically, what it's saying is the item with a specified name was not found. That means there was no picture. Okay, there is no picture, a selection row picture, right? And so that is the reason we got the bug. Now, when we click inside and we click outside again, we're not going to get that bug because the picture existed. But if we click outside one more time, that bug is going to appear. Okay, so the picture gets deleted, and then it tries to delete it again. And that is the reason. So we put these two, we put this on air resume next and on air go to zero. And that means that regardless if the picture exists, or it doesn't exist. If it exists, it gets deleted. If it doesn't exist, this bug is just skipped. This row is basically just skipped and no bugs appear. So that is it for the on sheet macros. On sheet macros. Let's go ahead and dive into the macros that run the other parts of this application. Okay, and that's under a module called Picture Macro. Okay, we have a few different subroutines on that. And if you'll notice at the top of this, we've a dimension two picture path as a string and selection row, SEL row as long. And the reason that these are above the macros is because these two get used frequently throughout the subroutines. And we've got uh, four different subroutines here, and those are used throughout all. So I didn't want to, I could have actually, you know, dim pick path as string in each one of these, but I don't want to do that in each in each macro. So if we do it above them, we we don't necessarily need to do it for each one. So that is it. That is the first one. And the first macro allows us to browse for file. Okay. The idea is here that if there if there's no file, if there's no picture link here, okay, and we select here, it's gonna ask us, hey, browse for file. Basically it's gonna say please find the file uh, that you want, okay? And we're looking for BA10101F, okay, that would be uh, this one right here. It doesn't really, really matter too much. Let's go ahead with this one. I don't know which one it is. Okay, we chose right. So basically what we're going to do is we want to browse the file, however, and the reason it came up is because when we select a row, we're running a macro. Okay, I'm going to turn that off for now just so just so we can go through it without without running that macro what i'm going to do is i'm going to comment this row out here pick display on click okay i just want to i don't want that macro to come up okay so now you see now the picture does not come up which is fine we're going to go through these macros one by one so we don't need to run it at each point okay so the idea is we've got three different macros that we want to run and the first of which is regardless of which regardless of whether we're putting a picture here or whether we're having a picture inside a comment we need to find that picture okay and we can provide we can do that through a link and this basically link is a link into your computer however it could also be a link uh, online like this one here right if I if I delete this picture okay and uh, we still have the link and we want to add the picture to the cell we can actually go to a web address it does take a little bit longer um, if we click that button and we click the macro and we'll go through that macro in a minute you'll see it's a little bit slow because it's it's pulling it it's downloading that picture from from the internet and it's placing it here but it can be done as well so you don't necessarily need to have a link that is based on a file in your computer it could be it could be just as easily a uh, link like like this one is here we can use this link right here and place this here which is what I've done so it could be a link from your browser. However, keep in mind, it does take a little bit longer to load. So I wanted to point that feature out for you as well. So let's go ahead and dive into this macro, add picture to cell, add picture to cell. Okay. And we'll go ahead and click on the modules. And we see this macro I've created called picture insert into cell. This is the macro that we're going to focus on. Okay. And basically, since all of all the work we are doing is on sheet one. Everything we there's nothing on sheet two or three, so we're going to use with sheet one, and we've wrapped that. So that means everything right in here, 
let's go ahead and tab that over so we can see. Everything here has to do with sheet one, and we have the end with. And I'll, let me go ahead and write that out. End of with, and we don't need that. That's some auto typing that I use to help me with sheet one. Okay, so that's the end if with sheet end with sheet one. Okay, so that is going to help us define. So that means we we don't need. We just use dot range. We don't need sheet one. Okay, because we know it's sheet one already. So first, we're going to define the selection row. Okay, and that is the active cell dot row. Now this is remember this is off sheet off sheet right we're in a macro however if we need to define the row and we're on the sheet we could use something like selection row equals target dot row okay so when you're on the sheet on the sheet we use target row when you're off the sheet you use you use selection act you use active cell row active cell okay off sheet active cell on sheet target okay and so that means we need to know what row is this the selection is the active cell so the active cell row is is whatever row that you have selected that is going to become the active cell row and we need to work with that so that's important that we define what row we're on because what I want to do is I want to say hey if there is a link here then we can continue to add the picture. But if there's no link here, we need to browse for it, okay? If there's no link here, and we click Add to Picture, we launch that browser, okay? I mean, we launch the uh, file dialog, and that's gonna tell us, okay, insert your picture. However, if we, if we now click this cell, and we click Add Picture to Cell, automatic oh let me go ahead and delete that first okay if we go ahead and click this macro it's going to be added automatically back because we already have the link and I'll show you how that works in the VBA so what we're saying here with this line of code if column L and selected row value okay equals empty that means if this L right this is L if this L and the select row if it's empty then we need to browse for the file then picture then run this macro this macro if it's empty and that macro is right here and all this macro does is it opens the file of dialog this it gives it a title okay it says okay it gives you can enter the following file formats right and we're focused on pictures so I've put in pictures if I've missed any here you can feel free to just simply type in another format dot let's say you could just do dot comma uh, star dot like T I F F okay you can do that as well so you can easily add formats so that when you go ahead and browse for it right let me go ahead and clear that out add picture to cell when you browse for it this is where we're looking at you see JPEG JPEG this is where this is where we're, we're adding it to so we remember we just added that TIFF -F, it appears right here so it's a great way to customize this there are times when you browse for a file that you want to give your users specific limitations on files that they can add and this is a great way to do that okay so you would do that right right through let's go ahead and click on that you would do that right through this line right here okay and then basically what it's saying is if the show does not equal negative one then there's no selection so basically it says if they have not selected anything okay then skip it but as long as they've made their selection then we're gonna say sheet one which is we don't actually we don't need sheet one we can oh we do we didn't use in this file we didn't use with sheet one so we do need sheet one okay because it's only a few lines of code here so with sheet one um, L and Axel equals selection item and this is the full path okay this is the full path so basically what that does is it enters the full path right here okay and that's how that works so that's pick browser for files so back into our uh, module here and into the macro so saying is if there's no file browse for it and put it in next if then it says if it's still empty just in case it's still empty we need to skip we certainly don't want to go through this if it's still empty so if it's empty go to no pick and that but it does no pick it skips it all and ends 
So it'll skip all that and go right here to the end. Okay. Most of the time it should not be empty. Now we're going to say pick path, and remember pick path is what we defined as a string here and dimension it out. Pick path equals dot range L and select a row. So basically it's saying that the picture path is equal to this string right here. Okay? So that string, pick your path. And now we are saying here, we again we need to delete any pictures. And what I have done is basically what I'm saying is, is if we add this picture to the cell, I don't want it to keep adding and adding and adding and adding. I, we need to, to re basically, I need to replace whatever picture was there with the new picture, okay? Because I don't want it to add. But what if it doesn't exist? So there are two conditions. Does the picture exist? If it does exist, delete it and replace it with a new one. If it doesn't exist, then don't worry about it. Okay, so once again, once again, let's go through back into the macro and saying, once again, we have an on arrow because we're going to delete this picture, okay? But if it doesn't, if the picture doesn't exist, we don't want it to cause a bug. So that's why we've wrapped this in the error catching this bug through these error catching methods. And now what we've done is I've assigned this to name row and selection row and pick. I've given it a name, okay? And take a look at this picture, and you see the name is right here, row 7 pick. And all I want to do is I want to give this picture a unique name that will not be anywhere else, okay? And let's go ahead and add a, let's go ahead and add a picture that is unique for this particular, that for this particular uh, row. So we'll take this one. I think this is unique. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's unique here. Okay, so um, what what I've done is I'm saying here this picture row seven pick. Look, this is row eight pick. This is row nine. You see the name right up here on the upper left here. So what I've done is I've assigned a unique name to each picture, and it, you can do you can do any you can name it. Maybe you might want to name your pick using the um, product name. You can give it any name you want. For simplicity, I've just used the row number. Uh, the only important thing is that I want. Oh, we do have now we have multiple pictures of the same. That's all right. You get the point. Um, so the idea is to make sure that each picture has a unique name. That is the important thing that you need to remember for this exercise. Each picture must have a unique name because we want to delete that picture. When, when we're adding a picture, we want to delete it. So now, once, now that we've deleted it, we're going to say with pictures, insert picture. This inserts the picture, okay? And then it's going to say with dot shape range. So basically we're saying with this new picture, what do we want to do? First, I want to lock the aspect ratio, okay? I don't want, when I resize it, I don't want it to be too big, or, you know, I don't want it to be too tall. I want, it, I want to have, uh, you see how this, I, I, when I drag it down, right, I want to make sure that the, that, the, that the aspect ratio is locked automatically when I resize it, when resize it. So the first thing we did is lock the aspect ratio, okay? And so we do that with this line of code. And I've given it a height. You can give it your own height, whatever you like, okay? So I've given it a height of 50. And then I've given it a name. And what I've done is I've given it row and our selected row, whatever row we've selected in the pick, remember? So I've given it a unique name. And the reason it's unique is because selection row is going to be different for every row. So now that we've created the picture and we've given it a specific height, we've locked the ratio and we've given it a name, now we can work with it. So the first part is creating the picture, locking the aspect ratio and giving size. And now this rest it focuses on the placement. Where do we want this picture placed? Okay, we can't have it placed anywhere. I want it in a specific place. So when I click here, I want it right in that same place. I want it in column K. I want it a little bit away from the edge, right? I don't want it right on the edge, and I don't want it right at the top. I want to move it down a little bit, and I want to move it to the middle. That's about where I want it. And we can do that with the following code. The first thing we want to do is we have two options when placing it. We have left and top, okay? So the left part is the selection of K and the selected row. K and the selected row left, okay? Now, if and the top is the top. Now look what happens when I comment the increments out. This allows us to fine tune the placement. But if we were to, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see, okay? 
if we've commented to those two out and I click add picture digital, you see how it hugs the left and it hugs the top, right? Without the increments, those two increment left, increment left allows us to move it, excuse me, allows us to move it over slightly to left and down. So I want to place it, I want to increment left this way, positive number, okay? And increment down, positive number. Now if we were going to increment left negative number, it would look like this. And increment left uh, negative top would look like this, okay? So without those increments, we're going to hug those two borders. I don't want to hug it. I want to be right in the middle of it. So we're going to say increment left 8, okay, move it 8 over and 2 from the top. So 2, two down from the top. Now, okay, we click add picture to cell and it moves it right there. Now, if we were to increase that, and let's just see, if we were to increase it to like 18, right, and 12, right, it would be very different. So you can see, we click here, and it's gonna appear, you know, way down, more down and more to the left. So you can see how changing those affects the placement of exactly where that is, okay? So you'll, you'll wanna play with these numbers so you can get your placement just right, okay? And the next thing is I've done is I wanna make sure that this row I want to make sure because sometimes this row can be too small, right? If this row is too small, not, that's not going to look good, right? So what I want to do is I want to make sure that the row height is also sufficient. So when I click here, right, and I click add picture to cell, I want that row height to automatically adjust as well based on our picture height. Now our picture is set at 50, so I'm going to, I'm going to put it to 54. And now that gives us two two increments uh, below the line and two above it. So that places it right in the middle. So we've got two increments above and below. So it places it right in the middle. So this automatically, in case our row height needs to be adjusted, this is what that macro does. And that is the macro for adding a picture to a cell. All right, the next macro that I'd like to go over with you adds, gives us the ability to add a picture within uh, comments, which is really nice uh, because it doesn't take up any space. You can keep the rows uh, very, very uh, at normal height and width and still display a picture on hover. Okay, and let's go ahead and delete one of these. Uh, delete the comment and uh, go ahead and delete that one too. Okay, so basically on this idea is all we have to do is select the cell and then click add picture to the comment and it gets added just like that. It's very quick and easy. Uh, just like it, uh, it is here, add picture to the comment. And let's go ahead and go over the macro and see how that is done. All right, back into the VBA module. And we're going to look uh, to a macro called pick insert into comment. Once again, with sheet one, because we're only working with one sheet, we're going to go through the same steps as we did the previous macro where we are going to define the selected row as the active cell and we're also going to check to see if column L in the selected row has a link and if it does not have a link we're going to browse instruct the user to browse for the picture okay and if it does then we're going to assign the picture path to that so we know the picture path and we're also going to delete the comment and this is very important um, we've also wrapped this in error catching method because we cannot add a new comment on top of an existing comment. For example, let's go ahead and comment this out, comment this out, comment this out. Okay, so we're not going to delete the comment. Okay, there's a comment here, and when we try to add a new one, we're going to get a bug and saying application defined or object defined error. And basically, what we the problem is, we are trying to add a comment into a place where there's already a comment. There's already a comment here. We cannot add a new comment. So it's very important to delete to delete the existing comment. So if we comment that out and uh, now we delete it, great, we're good to go, okay? No problem. However, let me go ahead and delete that comment, okay? Now there's no comment here, okay? So when we select that row and we click this, it's gonna give us another bug. And why is this? Now let's take a look at this bug, okay? And this bug says object variable with or without. It's not a very descriptive uh, bug and it's really hard to see, but basically the idea is here that this row okay let's go ahead and debug it okay this row says delete the comment okay e 
five comment delete okay but look there's no comment in e5 right we already deleted it right so basically it's trying to delete a comment that doesn't exist okay we have to so not only do we have to make sure it's deleted but if it's but if there is no comment there if there is no comment and we try to delete it it's going to create a bug so that's why we wrap this line in the on air so we want to skip it so basically it's saying we're saying if there's a comment, delete it. If there's no comment there, just go ahead and skip it. So that's why we wrap this. There's a few other ways to handle errors, but this is the way that I've chosen to. It just says skip it and then continue. So the idea of these three is basically if there is a comment, delete it. If not, then skip it. Now we can add a comment. Okay, so now we're going to say E select. First we add the comment. Okay, and if we and if we let's just comment out the rest of this so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what that looks like if we comment that out okay so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a comment now so let's go ahead and click add a comment okay so all it does is it add a comment box right it's just a plain comment box nothing in there okay so first we add a comment box and all that does is add the plain one okay so after that point is where we have to add the picture so it's with these lines in which we actually add the picture okay and we'll go over how that's done let me go ahead and uncomment that out here so we're saying with this specific comment now we want to do some things with it first we want to make it visible okay the reason we want to make it visible is because we have to do some things with it so we're going to make it visible and then we're going to make it invisible now you could show it always so I've chosen to hide it but you could theoretically so when we add it right we add it by we've I've, I've instructed here not to hide it so we, we could show it right we could theoretically show it but it kinda gets messed up so I've chosen to hide it automatically and only show on hover so basically we've chosen to make it visible and then visible equals false okay so then all we've done is we're going to say with this shape, right, fill. And what do we want to fill it with? We want to fill it with a user picture. And now what picture do we want? The picture path. So this tells us what we're, this tells us that we're going to fill it. This tells us what we're going to fill it with. We're going to fill it with a picture. And this tells us what picture to use. So that's how. And oftentimes without this, sometimes the user, without this, sometimes the user so if we tell it, we don't want any text, but if we take that out, if I comment that out, right, and we click Add Picture, when we highlight that, sometimes you'll see a name here, okay? Sometimes it'll, it'll assign a name automatically to that. So by uh, adding a comment, sometimes you'll see a name, like it puts your username automatically in the comment. So I'm just saying no text. So make sure this, this line keeps the text from making sure there's no text and then what we're going to do is we're going to select it and then we're going to size it okay first we're going to select the picture because we want to make sure and then with the selection the shape range scale width and we're just giving it so if you want your picture to be bigger you know if we want to make it 95 it's going to make it a little bit bigger right so when we click here and click add pictures it'll make it bigger um, and then so I've chosen 65 so that gives us the right properties right that gives us the right range so here you can you can size it up proportionally so that your scalability is correct on that and then we're just gonna say where do we want it to scale from the top left and then we're gonna make it invisible so that is how we do that that is simply how you add it and I've reset this so when we add a picture now you'll see it's re so it's very very quick okay and um, that is how we and now the last macro is the one that says display and click and remember we've temporarily disabled that because I didn't want it appearing while we're going so let's go ahead and enable that so we can display that picture because now we're focusing on that so let's go back to the on sheet macros here and we'll uncomment this out okay now when we click there we're gonna see we have this picture we'll go ahead and slide it over here when we click here we want the picture to show up okay and we do that with just a little bit of the macro and we'll show you how this is done back into the VBA and into the module we have what's called a macro pick display on click we want to display that picture on the click and we're gonna go through the same exact steps the same exact steps to get that picture and basically all we're doing is getting getting the picture path okay it's the same steps we've done in the 
and then we're also going to delete this picture now this particular picture this time I only want one picture showing up at a time I don't want multiple because they're big I don't want multiple I only want one picture so because we only want one picture at a time we can then name that picture we can give it a static name in other words it doesn't have to have a different name for every row we can have it so I've chosen to give it a selection row pick okay so that means regardless of what picture it's gonna have the same name okay regardless of what picture it displays same name and that's okay because what I want to do is I want to say if the user selects a row delete any picture with this name and then create a new one Okay, or even if you select outside, delete that picture. Okay, so this particular one with this picture, we are going to lock the aspect, aspect ratio. We're going to give it a specific height, and we're going to give it a very specific name. This is the name, always going to be this name. Okay, this name is not variable. Okay, so here we've created the picture. Okay, and then here we're going to place the picture. Okay, and this is the same thing here. We, we're going to say with this picture, we're going to give it a left of M and a top of M. So basically, I'll say based on column M, column M here, the top and the left. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Just the top of the M of the selected row and the left of the M of the selected row. Okay, so that's how we've done it. We have not done increments on this one because I don't necessarily want to place it farther away and I don't necessarily want to place it lower or higher or anywhere. I want to place it, I want to just hug hug the border and hug the top. So no, necess, no need for, for increments on this one. Okay, and that is how you do that. Now theoretically you may have lots of links and you may want to add them all at one time. For example, let's let's go ahead and delete these pictures. Let's go ahead and delete all of them. Okay. And uh, and go ahead and, and now that we have no pictures, okay, what if we want to add them all at the same time? What if we have all of our links, but I want to add them all of them at the same time on click. Well, we could do that with a macro, and we just have to do a for next loop. So let's go ahead and write that now, and we can create a new macro. Let's go ahead and uh, raise that up a little bit so you can see it, and we'll create a new sub sub pick display all uh, picks. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to display them all so I want to I'm gonna use insert into cell so basically I want to run this macro okay somewhere in here okay but what I want to do is what I want to do is I want to go through every row okay and I want to display the picture here I want to I want to start at row 5 and I want to go to the last row which is 16 now we know the row last row is 16 but in your data you may not know what the last row is so let's go ahead and define that last row okay right in the VBA so first we're gonna dim last row and we want to know what row we're on so let's go ahead and say table row okay as long whole numbers okay and first we want to know what is the last row the last row is equal to sheet sheet one dot range okay and we want to use something that's always gonna have data let's say column E Let's say I want to say the last row on column E. What is that last row? So last row it says say E9999 dot end XL up dot row. Okay, what that's going to do is this is going to get us 16. Last row is going to be 16. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create a for next loop. For table row equals, we're going to start on, starting on row 5. Okay. And we're going to go to 16 equals 5 to last row. Okay. And then we're going to say next table row. Okay. And we, what do we want to do? And all I really want to do is really what I want to do is I want to select a cell. I can select any cell. And then I'll basically want to click add the picture to cell basically but I want to do that for every one so all we really need to do is just select any row so let's just say we're going to select uh, E E5 okay we'll select so all we need to do is say sheet 1 because we haven't defined with sheet 1 we haven't used with sheet 1 above so we need to use sheet 1 each time range E 
and okay table row dot select okay we have to make sure it's selected first once it's selected we can run that macro and that's it that's all we have to do all right so now when we run this macro let's go ahead and clear this out and move it over here so you can see what's going on here and we'll slide this over here so you can see and now when we select anywhere in here okay it's going to define the last row and it's going to and it's going to here's what's going to happen it's going to go through every every row from five to last row it's going to select it it's a little bit slow but uh, it'll work and in fact for this last one it since we're pulling it from the website this one might be a little bit slow but that's fine uh, no problem at least you don't have to do anything with it and so let's go ahead and run this right now by uh, clicking on the F we can do F5 or clicking the play button let's go ahead and play it and you see there it is they're all being inserted now and the last one's gonna take a little bit longer and uh, that'll get answered as well because we're pulling that directly from the website so that one takes a little bit longer but it all works very very well all right so you see now we just ran a for next loop and all those pictures got in you can do the same thing with comments as well you could run through and, and add all of them comments so with a simple loop and I'll keep that loop in here on in the workbook so you can see that running this but I have a you could assign a button to that too I have not assigned a button you may not want to use it but you could simply do that and just for a refresher on right click assign macro okay that's how we assign a macro to anything okay and uh, that is it for this lesson I hope you have liked it and that is three distinct ways on how to add pictures to a table so thank you very much please please share this video with your friends or in your favorite group and also Please feel free to find us on YouTube as well under Excel for Freelancers. Subscribe and get alerts there. Thank you so much for joining us.